everyone. We're starting chapter six today. The topic is going to be Boltzmann probability. We need to be reading chapter six, especially session, sections one and two of the textbook to stay up this week. We're going to go kind of slowly through sections one and two because it's really super important. So what we're doing is moving on from thermodynamics, which we finished in chapter five. And we're going to return to statistical mechanics to pick up the most important tools in that field. The tools are called partition functions. We'll introduce those explicitly, not in this lecture, but in the next one. Um, and they're really easy to use. They're very interesting. Um, and I mean, in my opinion, it might be a good idea to even do them earlier than chapter six. But it's okay, we're doing it now. <clears throat> so here's the setup for pretty much all of chapter six. We're going to imagine that we have a large system. That's this whole box here. And the system is at a temperature T. And we're going to consider this little blue circle a small subsystem. And we want to ask what's the probability that the subsystem is found to have an energy E sub S. The rest of the system that's not the subsystem is called the reservoir. Again, it's at temperature T and it has an energy U sub R. And so our whole system that we're thinking about here is a combination of a reservoir that's large and a subsystem that's small. The total energy of the system U is going to be equal to the energy of the reservoir plus the energy of the subsystem. And we've constructed this so that the energy of the subsystem is much, much less than the energy of the total system. It's important to keep in mind that E sub S is meant to be a generic label. So it could refer to a set of discrete quantum states, energy levels. That's most often how we'll view it. There could be a continuous distribution of energies that are allowed. <clears throat> so again, our goal is to figure out what is the probability that we find this little piece of the system with energy E sub S. We want to know how that probability depends on what E sub S is and what the temperature of the reservoir is. So it's really important that both are uh, kept in the forefront of your mind. You care about the energy of the subsystem and you care about the fact that the subsystem is in thermodynamic equilibrium with this large reservoir at temperature T. <clears throat> so to start the derivation, we're gonna do something a little bit weird. We're gonna actually focus on formulas for the properties of the reservoir at temperature T. And the reason is we can make the note that the probability we're interested in, probability of E sub S, is exactly the same as the probability that the reservoir has energy U sub R equal to U, the total energy, minus E sub S. So in other words, probability of E sub S is by definition the probability of the reservoir having U sub R. <clears throat> Those are equivalent probabilities. So next we can use the Boltzmann definition of entropy, S equals KB ln omega. And we can solve for the multiplicity of the reservoir. It's E to the entropy of the reservoir divided by KB. And then the probability of the reservoir having that energy U sub R is just proportional to the multiplicity function. So P of R, P sub R of U sub R is proportional to E to the S sub R over KB. So far, all we've done is to rewrite the Boltzmann definition of entropy for the reservoir. So what does it get us? Well, first of all, the reservoir is a macroscopic object, so it makes sense for us to be talking about macroscopic properties like entropy, multiplicity um, for, that, for that particular object. But what we can do now is build the bridge that statistical mechanics is always doing between macroscopic and microscopic by substituting 
the energy of the reservoir with the energy of the total system minus the energy of the subsystem. And since the energy of the subsystem is small compared to the total energy, we can tailor expand the function s of r, s sub r of u sub r about u. And the tailor expansion looks like this. This entropy function that we care about substitute in u minus e sub s. And so this is a large parameter minus a small parameter ripe for Taylor expansion. So that's going to be s sub r of u minus partial s sub r with respect to u sub r at constant n and v. Remember, s is a function of u, v, and n times e sub s plus terms that are uh, higher order in e sub s and far, far less relevant. <clears throat> so let's break down this Taylor expansion to see what it means piece by piece. The zeroth order term of the Taylor expansion is just what the entropy would be if the reservoir had all of the energy for itself and none were in the subsystem. None of the energy was in the subsystem. The first order Taylor expansion term is the correction that you get when you allow this little tiny bit of energy to go into the subsystem. And then there are higher order corrections. You'll never need them. In statistical mechanics, um, approximating things by first order Taylor expansions is usually fantastically good. Okay, so here we are, and probably you already noticed that a partial derivative of s with respect to u is something we know about. It's just the inverse temperature. So how the entropy of the reservoir changes when we change its internal energy under conditions of constant n and v is just what we use to define 1 over t. And so we can rewrite the first order Taylor expansion for the entropy of the reservoir as some number minus e sub s over t. And we can substitute this right back into the probability that the reservoir has that energy just from Boltzmann's formula. That's equal to p of e sub s as we already said. And so that's just going to be proportional to e to the minus e sub s over kvt. The s sub r factor is irrelevant. It can be considered as part of whatever proportionality constant goes in this expression. So I'm just going to stop writing it. So remember, statistical mechanics is about building bridges between the microscopic world and the macroscopic world. And in this formula, we have both of those things present. We have microscopic energy levels. We have macroscopic thermodynamic state variables. <clears throat> we built the bridge by devising a derivation where we could start with macroscopic discussion, entropy of the reservoir, and then bring in the microscopic parameter as a small expansion parameter. It's a really cool trick, um, and we'll see it again at least once. So this is the key result for the day. This is the essential point of the Boltzmann probability that the probability of observing a subsystem with energy E sub s in equilibrium with a reservoir at temperature T is proportional to E to the minus E sub s over kVt. In the next set of slides, we'll turn this into an equality and we'll talk in great detail about the meaning of the normalization coefficient. But we already have some practical things we can do. We can compute relative probabilities with this expression already. So if you're interested in two different energy levels accessible to the subsystem, call them E sub 2 and E sub 1, then the relative probability of finding the subsystem with those energies is E to the minus energy splitting divided by kVt. And so the proportionality constants that would be present in the main formula in the purple box have to cancel in the ratio because you're doing this calculation for generic subsystem energy uh, 
in equilibrium with the same reservoir T. And so whatever comes out front here is going to be the same for any of the E sub S's, and so it'll always cancel. But I promise you we'll actually prove that explicitly in the next slides. Well, let's do an example. <clears throat> let's imagine we have a box full of hydrogen atoms. We know the exact quantum mechanics solution for the hydrogen atom. The energy levels are given by this formula. E sub n is minus 13.6 electron volts divided by the square of some integer, the principal quantum number. This is a quantum problem. This is not StatMac. We have to be given this or know it or whatever. To do the StatMac, we're going to apply Boltzmann probability analysis. And so let's imagine that our subsystem is one hydrogen atom, and let's imagine that the reservoir is at 1,000 Kelvin. We're going to consider what's the relative probability of finding the hydrogen atom with its electron in the n equals 2 state compared to the n equals 1 state, the ground state. So at 1,000 Kelvin, we take this ratio. The delta in the numerator is about 10 eV. We convert the denominator to EV, we get a ratio of probabilities that's astronomically small. So the basic physical meaning of this is that at a temperature of 1000 Kelvin, virtually none of the hydrogen atoms would be expected to be in an excited state. And so from some perspective, 1000 Kelvin is a low temperature when you're looking at the hydrogen atom. And this is one of the most important facts about the Boltzmann probability, is that it gives you a handle on how to assess whether your system is at a high temperature or a low temperature or some intermediate temperature. <clears throat> and so if you know the energy splittings that are relevant to your physical system, high temperature is when KBT is much bigger than those splittings. Whereas low temperature is the opposite limit, where KBT is much less than the relevant energy splittings. This is a an type of analysis that you should be very comfortable with um, at the end of this course, if you're not already. Intermediate temperatures you can analyze by just sort of thinking about when does KBT about equal to the relevant energy sp splitting in your problem. So if this condition is true, you can say excited states have a reasonably high probability relative to ground states. And so if we just calculate what would happen if KBT is about equal to delta E and the relative probability, you get that their relative probability is about 1 over E, or about 0.36. So not too different, uh, not, not very improbable to be in an excited state under these conditions. <clears throat> so a couple of numerical notes. At 300 Kelvin, KBT is about 0.026 eV. That's a good number to keep in your mind. A lot of physicists memorize that just to have some frame of reference for temperature energy conversions. <sighs> Another thing is that if you have a splitting of 1 eV, you would need to put that subsystem in equilibrium with a reservoir at more than 11,000 Kelvin to achieve this condition where excited states uh, are reasonably probable. So it's important that when we do this analysis, we're actually not saying that temperature and energy are just the same thing measured in different units. Uh, in some sense, the KBT here is better to be thought of as a reference, right? So basically, um, a reference point for what temperature a reservoir would have to have to give substantial excited state relative probabilities. <clears throat> Very dangerous to misinterpret energy and temperature as the same thing, in my opinion. So what about the reservoir? What is it and should we be talking about it in more detail? One of the things that's important about this approach is that the reservoir is considered quite generic. The only thing that matters is that it's big. In other words, much bigger than the subsystem. And that it is at a fixed temperature, T. 
t. That's a that's a constant. And so it could be anything. It could be an oven. It could be a bunch of gas being heated by uh, a you know a liquid bath surrounding it. It could be a cryostat. It's whatever is maintaining the system at at some constant temperature. Uh, and importantly, it's included in the Boltzmann factor. And when we are thinking about a macroscopic system, which the reservoir is, there are only a few parameters that matter. And in this setup, the only parameter that matters is T. So that's all we need to say about the reservoir. It's big, and it has a temperature, and it's in equilibrium with the subsystem, of course. So. What we did today is we built a new bridge between the microscopic world and the macroscopic world by constructing the Boltzmann probability formula. As we've written it here, we can use it to compute relative probabilities of different microscopic energy levels of a subsystem if the subsystem is in equilibrium with a large reservoir at temperature T. And Using this type of analysis, you can explain what you consider to be high or low or intermediate temperature by comparing the relevant energy differences in your physics system to KBT of the reservoir with which it is in equilibrium. So that's all I'm going to say about this. And the next time we'll talk about the proportionality coefficient in the Boltzmann probability and start to develop the reasons why that is such an important quantity and such a valuable tool in statistical mechanics.